listening to the Pagan Center Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. This episode of PCP, the Pagan Centered Podcast. I'm Amber. I'm Brandon. I'm Sam. I'm Scurv. And also joining us tonight are Kara. I'm Barrett. I'm Peter. I'm Saturn. And the guest of the hour is Miss Kelly Mays, pagan rapper, and we will be having an interview with her this episode right after these messages. And we're back. Hello and welcome, Kelly. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Doing all right. Doing all right. Good. So let's get all the messy stuff out of the way. So how did PCP happen to get readers? Well, um, one of the ways that, um, you know, I'm looking in terms of, like, you know, how I understand the world. It's all about doing things differently. Um, and one of the ways that, you know, we've been promoting... Um, me and my message is by looking for um, podcasts and blogs and things such as yourself that, um, you know, relate to the type of topics that I talk about. So it was really just a, a silly mistake that <laughs> we put readers, I put readers instead of uh, listeners. Um, you know, we email a lot of people. It's definitely, I'm sure that was probably obvious to you, um, you know, initially that the mistake was there because, um, you know, it was just sort of an oversight, more or less. So you don't have readers. I, I got that. <laughs> and I apologize. I apologize for the mistake. But, you know, it connected us. So maybe, you know, it was the universe helping me out. <laughs> Maybe in, maybe in a was, very backwards way. You know, I was thinking maybe it was something cool like a pagan deaf rapper or something that read transcripts. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not it's not that it's not that cool. No, oh, fair enough. So you grew up outside of Pittsburgh and then moved to Pittsburgh. So what brought you to Pittsburgh of all places? Well, um, I mean, I, I think everything happens sort of for a reason, but um, specifically when I was uh, in high school, my boyfriend at the time, his family was from here, and I took a trip here with him to visit them, and I just felt like a magnet inside my body was sort of drawn to the city. I didn't, it wasn't really something I could explain. I mean, the bright lights and you know, the dichotomy of what it, where I grew up in the middle of nowhere with no tall buildings and not a lot of people. Um, I suppose that was part of it, but I just, I felt like I wanted to be here. And um, when I had the opportunity to apply for colleges, um, I actually applied as early as I could to Pitt. Um, you know, I couldn't really afford to go out of state anyway. So it was like, mm. I thought Pitt was a, a good option because it's such a big school and there's so many different, um, you know, options in terms of what to study. So I applied very early and got accepted, and I didn't even apply anywhere else. So what'd you go for? I studied, uh, well, I actually started, I was a theater major when I, when I went into college. I didn't declare, but I was taking theater courses, and I kind of very quickly realized that Pitt was too big of a school to, to successfully um, make it in their theater department because it was, they were always choosing plays that only had like one or two people. Um, so I just kind of realized, and, and I also sort of, I'd not really done acting before. And I, I think it was just something I felt I, I was drawn to, but 
I really was much more drawn to performing my own work and being myself instead of acting like someone else. <laughs> and then I studied communication for the last three years and just studied, you know, marketing and um, radio and poetry and all everything and anything. I mean, communication is such a broad field, so it was it was a good time. So, did you explore different styles of performing? Uh, as far as music wise while you were in college or yeah I mean I never really um, I've since I was really young I was always into music and um, and whatnot and then when I got into school I started to um, become really connected to astrology and I I got a radio show at the pit radio station covering astrology and you know, would always, like, hear all of the DJs and the various, like, hip-hop shows and whatnot, and I'd always loved hip-hop, and I've always, like, rhymed in my head. It was always kind of something I did since I was really young, and I liked hip-hop since I was really young. So I just was kind of drawn to that scene, and I became really good friends with um, a lot of DJs and MCs and activists, and I always kind of had an activist mentality also, and I got really into a lot of you know, what maybe would be termed revolutionary hip hop um, at that time. But I didn't really like explore performing all that much or, or my own music. I really didn't have the confidence, to be honest. Um, I was like, I would sing backup and um, whatnot, but I really kept most of my writing and my own music to myself until like the very end of school. So you were just a backup singer for a while then? Well, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't even say I did that all that much. I mean, it was um, in college, I, I more or less, um, you know, just kind of was behind the scenes. I was writing and I was singing on my own all the time, but I was not performing. I was always kind of behind the scenes. And then the very last year of college, I um, linked up with a few MCs that, were very, uh, you know, believed in me and were kind of kind of pushed me to start putting my own music out there. And I would put do like a verse or two on their songs. And then, uh, you know, I started recording almost right right when I got out of college. And how long have you been doing your own stuff like this? Um, in that in terms of recording, I guess mm -hmm. it would be about almost exactly ten years. But I I would say over the last couple years is when I really started to take it seriously and really feel like you know more centered in that this is my purpose and this is what I want to be doing all the time. So you said you got drawn to Pittsburgh. Do you think that you'll be leaving Pittsburgh or feel a need that maybe this Pittsburgh isn't where you're going to stay, or do you think you're going to stay in Pittsburgh? Um, it's an interesting question. I, I, I do feel like very um, at home here. I don't really have a reason to leave. My business is here. Um, all my, you know, my friends, a really great spiritual community. Um, but at the same time, I have been here now for 10 years, and I do, you know, fancy the idea of, you know, checking out other parts of the country, or other parts of the world, potentially. Um, but I don't have any definite plans to do that. I, I see myself always having grounding in Pittsburgh on some level. Um, I just got a house. I just bought a house with a couple people here um, and built a studio in my house and all that kind of good stuff. So I think I'll always come back here, even if I'm not living here. Where did you come from originally? I think I might have missed that part if we, if you had stated that or not. I yeah. remember you saying it was uh, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's, um, they, they say, you know, in Pennsylvania, it's the Pittsburgh and Philly and then the Alabama in between. That's where <laughs> I was. Um, but it specifically, it's called, um, I, I really lived in New Berlin, which is a, very small town that few people know, but most people are familiar, if you're familiar with Pennsylvania or, or schools, Ivy League schools, uh, Bucknell University is in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is really close to where I lived. So 
was a lot of it was like hippies and kind of like hippies and rednecks because there was a lot of universities around me. <laughs> so there was definitely some uh, some of that kind of vibe going on, but otherwise it was very country. What um <clears throat> when you were in college, what causes did you get involved with? Um, when you were you're doing your activism. Um, well, I was sort of involved in all kinds of different things. Um, I worked at the uh, pit radio station doing uh, news every day for a long period of time. Um, it was, you know, every day from like by, I think like 4.30 to 5.30, I was hosting that show. And, um, you know, I considered that sort of like one form of kind of me helping get the word out because we were sort of covering all kinds of different topics, a lot that weren't covered in the mainstream media. Um, I also, you know, I mean, in college, I would say I kind of got, became really aware of, uh, you know, just like the extreme uh, nature of poverty and things like that. And I started looking into um, the One Campaign and various other organizations like that, that I ended up becoming much more involved with later um, during my, like the first part of my career. But, um, you know, on campus, I mean, anytime there was any sort of like political things going on, I usually got involved, but... Um, you know, at the same time, I was definitely still sort of caught up in my own ego and my own life and my own, you know, problems that I definitely didn't, you know, do as much as maybe I wish I would have during that time. Looking back on it, is there anything that you think that you would have given a second go around that you would have been involved in or that you've gotten involved in because of the missed chance? Um, uh, I don't, I mean, there's definitely, um, you know, it, it seemed like at least when I was there that there, during that time, that was like two, it was like 98 to 2002. Um, you know, I was there during the, you know, September 11th and all that kind of, craziness and um I was actually very involved in coverage of that whole situation and if you remember Pittsburgh was was actually a focal point for that and I ended up doing some like student reporting for uh for different for this national college kind of um podcast talk show type thing that was going on at the time um and I I do think I I wish at that time I had maybe gotten a little bit more involved in some of the um, different things that were going on and on campus at that time. I was really just sort of sucked into the story and what was happening. But, um, you know, there, it was a really interesting, like, dialogue about, I mean, at that time, nobody thought that, you know, the sort of things that you hear now, that it's an inside job or anything like that. But I mean, that whole time period was kind of a blur in a way, and I, I wish I was a little bit more present because I was kind of right in the middle of so much uh, so much chaos, kind of. <laughs> yeah. So where out in Pittsburgh are you now? I live in Lawrenceville. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know where that is. Uh, half of us in the chat are from Pennsylvania. Nice. Some of us still live there. <laughs> I'll, accept, right. I'll accept hugs as uh, condolences. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us got smart and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Most yes. of us are from smaller areas of Pennsylvania and thus ran away. Mm -hmm. In, in the uh, Alabama section, as you had said. <laughs> well, what, you're from Clarion, Scurvy's from Central PA, Sam's from above Philly, Although I do and then I'm to, from Pittsburgh. I do have to reiterate, none of my genetics derive from this state. <laughs> I'm just happy there's no more snow in my future. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I did two years in Erie, 
and and it was terrible. I hope never to hear the word lake effect for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> or snowbell. God. You know, we got snow today, so I just don't even want to hear any complaining about snow. <laughs> You oh, know what? It's 65 right here, right now, Kara. Wow, 15 minutes before our first derail. New record. <laughs> 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 Sorry. All right, Scurvy, I got the point. Back on topic. So you mentioned uh, businesses. What takes up most of your time? I know you do the obvious is the singing. What else do you do with your career that... Um, well, I, uh, I have a business called Nocturnal, um, and that's, we're basically a, a marketing firm, um, where we focus mostly on events. We plan events from start to finish. That's kind of something that I was always, uh, very into. And the premise of the business kind of was that, you know, I had learned, pretty early, like, I don't know, probably, like, maybe seven or eight years ago, kind of about various um, indigenous prophecies and things like that that talked about, um, you know, that when women sort of come together, finally, that the world will start um, taking a different direction. And I really believe that and believe that still. And so the business was actually all, all female owned and operated, um, although now I kind of recognize that it's it became somewhat exclusionary in the early part, um, not on purpose, but just because of how people sort of read into it, but um, against men, that is. But uh, so, yeah, so we're pretty much all women and um, we're all activists and we're all very, very interested in, um, you know, online marketing and Facebook and um, things of that nature, and we involve that in our business, you know, offer that to our clients, and we work with clients of all different sizes, um, from like really small clubs and nonprofits and restaurants to you know some larger national clients. Um, more and more recently, we have been, so it's um, that definitely has taken up. A lot of my time over the last five years we started about five years ago um but i would say that you know my my intention right now moving forward is that i really build because we're all we all love music um and I, I have two girls that i that i work with that are kind of my partners and crime on everything that we do and we're all very passionate about music and that music is, you know, kind of a vehicle to do all sorts of different awesome things in the world. So we want to be able to hone our skills at promoting music and um, independent music artists that, you know, maybe are overlooked for various reasons by mainstream record labels and things like that. And so I'm kind of like a guinea pig on some level um, in that, you know, we're just trying different things to see how we can get the word out and you know that's definitely a been a big part of my life but quick question um mm -hmm. what do you feel that has that you are doing differently than some of the other uh groups that are not necessarily singing about mainstream topics that have made you marketable to the the mainstream groups, uh, not groups, but, uh, record companies and so forth? Um, I think I understand your question. If I'm, if I'm off here, you can let me know. Um, I mean, I guess basically I, I don't know that I, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's hard to keep track of everyone that's, that is making music that's not necessarily got mainstream topics. Um, I would say maybe what I'm doing differently, I haven't heard of too, too many rappers um, or, you know, people that are sort of discussing the type of things that I'm, that I talk about in my music. 
um, in the world of hip hop. Although hip hop, by you know, certainly, especially underground hip hop, talks about all sorts of different things that relate to spirituality and um, and quantum physics and creating reality and all that kind of good stuff. It's it's there. It's just not necessarily the central message. You know, I would say so. Um, I do think that, you know, I've been trying as much as possible to really um, create relationships with videographers and photographers and stuff like that to create as much content as possible because being independent and, and not having a major label behind you that has, you know, is pumping money into producing you and putting you out there, you kind of have to just, you know, use your relationships and, and whatnot. And that's been a huge part because I think you've got to constantly release content out into the world with the internet and people's sort of attention spans dwindling. It's important to just constantly put new material out there. So that's maybe one thing that I would say I'm doing a little differently. Although I wouldn't say I'm doing it as well as I want to be. And that's, that's a big part of the next like year of my life. I'm really committed to producing a lot more music and putting it out there on a, on a very consistent basis. And then, you know, we're definitely, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. Um, my question kind of takes off on this. Uh, what would you say is a, um, like a number one, tip or an idea that you could give to another musician or group that's coming out on ways that they could promote themselves when they are independent and they don't have a budget, they don't have the big, big backing or the long arm that a studio can give? Uh-huh. Um, I would say the number one tip would be to nurture your fan base. Um, I think it's it can be time consuming and and um a bit you know demanding on some level to to do that in a real way but i um i definitely since the beginning of promoting me on this new level over the last year i would say i just have really taken it very seriously to respond as much as humanly possible to every fan that you know reaches out and i mean i do have the advantage of having people around me who are marketing geniuses and who are really, um, you know, aware and, um, without that, you know, as just an independent artist, I would say it's just really about making sure that you're nurturing that fan base that you have, um, because they're the most important, you know, resource for you. And, you know, from like a, a spiritual perspective, it's, it's like, you know, to me, I see every person that listens to my music as part of the message and really like... Sorry. Sorry. Oh, what the hell? I just oh. opened. Yeah. <laughs> By clicking buttons, Featherhead. Hey, Kelly? Yes. You are on the Pagan Centered podcast and your music does have some pagan themes. So we got to ask you, what got you interested in paganism? Um, well, I mean, I've always been interested in anything esoteric in, in nature. I mean, um, and anything that has to do with understanding why we're here and, um, how everything works and why nature is the way that it is. So I've just sort of always been drawn to anything in that realm and, and science as well. And I would just you know, I, I've learned a lot about religion through my life. I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I've ever been a very religious person. So, um, but I've always been, I've always felt very spiritual and connected to something and I've always been looking into it. So I would say like it's, it started when I became aware of astrology and just, you know, it was like, oh, wow, there's something that kind of explains you know, me and why I am the way that I am. And I would, I just got really, really, really into astrology and that just let, you know, one thing led to another and I, you know, everything kind of built upon one thing built upon another thing. 
So do you consider yourself pagan? I mean, I've never called myself a pagan. I know that because I don't really like labels of any kind because I just feel like it, it gives you very little room to, to um, change and grow, which all humans do. But if I had to, you know, put some sort of label, that's certainly one that I would, I would consider because, you know, the actual origin of the word is, is really kind of anything that's not, you know, any, someone that sort of believes in something else, but at the same time, you know, isn't really into a deep religious practice like Christianity, for example. So I'm kind of curious, do you see any conflict between kind of a pagan belief system and doing all this marketing and promoting consumerism and the buying of things? Because those, those things kind of are incongruent. Yeah, um, I don't feel that I do market consumerism. Um, I mean, my business certainly does on some levels, but fortunately, I mean, we, we've worked really hard, as hard as it is to, to sometimes pay the bills, and we have to make concessions um, here and there, but we've worked really hard to get behind things that we feel are enriching, you know, the brain, like doing, you know, working with organizations that are involved in events, because I think, you know, events in particular are opportunities for, um, you know, people to create a memory and to create relationships and create connections in their lives. Um, a lot of the events are, you know, sponsored by liquor companies and, and things like that. And so, it, you know, there's certainly a conflict, um, and I find a conflict in, in everything in life, so I can't, I can't say that I'm free of conflict or, or hypocritical sort of, um, you know, nothing, everything has, has some sort of hypocritical thing going on, in my, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, I feel really strongly about, you know, in terms of me as an artist and the messages that I have been putting forth and and whatnot, um, I don't feel that I'm promoting consumerism in any way. Um, you know, I'm sure that you could look at a video and and argue that on some level people have, you know, things like uh, my third eye video, I remember someone saying something about, you know, I don't know that I was wearing makeup or that I had, you know, all this jewelry on or something like that. You know, I can see it, I can see it being misconstrued in that way but you know I'm just really being me and that's you know all I can really be at the end of the day well, that's this kind of goes to my next question which is you know you live in a city and kind of being on a pagan related path does that affect your music in any way because you're kind of disconnected from what nature is happening how do you deal with that well um I I would say that, I mean, I do um, really still enjoy nature. I mean, I, I don't see nature as something where you have to be in the middle of, you know, a forest or, or something of that nature to, to feel connected. Um, I mean, I feel connected when it rains. I feel connected when I look at the sunshine, when I pay attention to clouds, um, you know, and definitely I, I do get like a bit of an itch on a pretty regular basis to get out of nature and fortunately those of you that maybe have been to Pittsburgh would be aware but it's you know literally minutes from trees and you know like even just down the street when I go for walks um you know in the summertime within about 10 blocks is this gigantic um cemetery that has ponds and trees and you know it's a cemetery but it's still a connection and you know I can go hug some trees and meditate and and do whatever practice I wish and a lot of my spiritual groups and gatherings and things like that also happen um near nature and um I've, I've been made a commitment this summer specifically there's some labyrinths and things like that that are outside the city um that I'm, you know, interested in checking out. I haven't, haven't actually been there to this point, but 
you know, to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, if you're not in the middle of it, that you aren't still connected. In Pittsburgh, you go from the center of the city, 15 minutes out, almost in any direction, you'll hit farms. Absolutely. Then five minutes later, you're back into a city-like area. Mm -hmm. So, and also, what was the, basically, necropolis that we used to go to, girl? Uh, that was the, oh, it was right in Westview. It was the, um, the Mason Cemetery right on, uh, Perry Highway in Cemetery Lane. I don't remember the name of it, but I know it's it's huge. It's Thanks. right off the uh, bus station in Perry Highway, right on the north side. So nice. you were saying about that, I was like, yeah, I remember going to some of the cemeteries that are like... Yeah. Acres upon acres. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you, if you look at um, the video, I did a video for... It's called City of Champions, and it's all about Pittsburgh. And um, I purposely shot that video um with the help of some people that have lived here their whole lives in you know in some really beautiful green areas and cemeteries is definitely one of the um key points in Pittsburgh where you can get a lot of nature there's some really beautiful scenery and views from all kinds of different cemeteries yeah, I have to say it was quite amusing watching the video and going, "Oh yeah, I know that place." Oh yeah, I know that place. Oh, yeah, I've been there too. <laughs> uh, we had a comment in the chat room a while back. Uh, somebody had mentioned they found it interesting that you pick a such a hard urban style to do the message of an earth tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess that comes from... I don't really feel so much that I chose it. I feel it chose me or that it was just sort of, you know, destined in a way, but I... Um, I've always been really drawn to the beat and the, um, the, just the way that hip hop has been used to kind of like just cover so many different topics and it's so popular all over the world in terms of people, you know, feeling like they have a voice and the best part about hip hop is that you can say a whole lot in one song that you can't say in a pop song or I mean certainly folk you know there's like Ani DeFranco and such that say just as much in one song but I love to dance and and move and feel connected in that way so um it just always drew me in and I've, I've loved it since the minute that I heard it when I was I think eight or nine so um it was just a really natural choice for me and I felt like it was kind of interesting that I had all these different things to talk about in a realm where it, it, it you know, you, they aren't necessarily talking about energy or meditating or, you know, being connected with mother nature. It's not really a theme in hip hop. And, you know, I don't, while it's maybe strange, I don't think it's a bad thing to, you know, enter a new realm with a different message. And real quick, before we continue, do you have Skype sounds beeping? Oh, um, can you, on the main toolbar, you should be able to go into tools, options, sounds, and you should be able to mute. Okay. That definitely could be me. <laughs> no big deal. You said, where, where did you say to do this at? Uh, when you go to your main Skype page, it'll have the toolbar up type, top, and it should say tools. And then you go to options to sounds, and then you can mute. That might have been me, too. No, I turned yours off. <clears throat> yeah, I it's... Had to go back in in the main, you mean the main toolbar at the top? Yeah. Um, I'm on a Mac, um, and I'm not seeing tools uh, there. Uh, if you go to... It says Skype, and you can edit your profile. It should be able to change sounds. <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be an episode without technical oh. difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> mm 
Yeah, this is um It should be something with your profile or options. You know, I think um, with Max, it, it's a little different, and I'm just trying to find... I, I mean, I yeah, just, Max like, have I an just, older version, and I'm not familiar with it, so... Yeah, I just I just put mute all sound effects. I'm hoping that that's it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That should be fine. Okay, just found it. All right, cool. <laughs> Sorry awesome. about that. That's okay. Hey, Dave's post-producing this one. It's all good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dave. So have you run into any problems with friends or family or extended family being that a spiritual or at least the earthbound path is not really a common thing, especially in Pennsylvania? As much as there's the community, it's still not a mainstream path. Have you that has that caused any problems? Um, no. My my family. I mean, I was I was raised uh, Christian, and um, you know, I really, I really do believe that you know, in terms of belief in general, that everything's okay. And you know, I don't. I I personally don't. You know, necessarily, while I talk about all sorts of different themes, I like I said, I don't really sort of um, define myself one way or the other, and so. I haven't ever really, I think, ticked anyone off to a point where I've said this is wrong or this is right or something like that. Um, so I've not had any issues. And, and my family, for the most part, really isn't practicing. You know, they don't go to church or anything like that. So um, I've not really had too many issues. I mean, certainly on, on different, um, you know, like, blog, like, web... Um, what do you call it, YouTube comments and things like that, the general public, I've definitely gotten all sorts of, you know, like that I'm a devil worshiper or a cult leader or various things like that. I've been um, trying to get that hate mail, but nobody wants to give it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, an, as an offshoot of that question, uh, have you ever had any trouble breaking into the business world or the music world because of your overall look or spirituality? Um, I don't, not really. Um, I think, I think maybe because I, I do, I'm also, you know, very into, like I, I'm all about sort of being conscious of what's going on in the world. So I even think, you know, on some level that because I, I do talk about, you know, real issues that are happening and, and um, various things. It's like it sort of gets, I almost just become kind of, I guess, I don't want to say categorized, but sort of put into the realm of that, you know, I'm a conscious rapper or I'm a conscious artist. And that sort of is, is more understood. Um, but, you know, I, I, it's not like I'm getting calls every day from major labels trying to sign me. And, you know, I don't know if that's because I have some, you know, off the beaten path sort of messaging or if it's just, you know, because of there could be a million reasons, you know. I have gotten calls, but um, in the past, over the last like six or seven months, but, um, you know, I think that my general topics are not really something that would be played on the radio and, and therefore I'm kind of not really part of the conversation regardless of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about partying and, you know, violence and misogyny and sex. So it's kind of, you know, I'm not really falling into the realm of a lot of the mainstream music. We have now have a star of Foster that will be joining us in a second here. Hey, star. Okay. Hey guys. Greeting star. Are you? Hey. So I've been I've been I've been like lurking in, in the chat room, and I apologize. Um, so I, I have a quick question. You know, and I'm, I'm I've got an echo. Hold on, just one second. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I heard my own echo. So <laughs> so I have a quick question. Um, you know, there are some, some non-mainstream hip-hop artists that are starting to gain ground right now, like um, Janelle Monae is one. 
Mm -hmm. um, and what you do is sort of very different from a, a dream um, hypnosis that I've heard. So do you feel that you've you've really tapped into sort of a, a, a niche that people will be for this music? I noticed that your, your YouTube videos have gotten a lot of views, so there, there seems to be some traffic there. Yeah, um, I love Janelle Monae, um, but yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I mean, that's sort of what I'm creating, that's what I'm envision. you know, I envision that, that there is an interest and a hunger for it, um, you know, I think, I would like to say that, I would like to think that um, people in general are at a point where they're looking for alternative ways to sort of concept the world and how it works and you know I just I do a lot of different types of work um and you know one of which I've recently kind of become really aware of you know I've been working with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people through this education that I do and I've been kind of learning that you know by and large sort of all humans are kind of in this place of being pretty fed up with everything and, you know, fed up with themselves and fed up with the, with the world that's sort of around us. And, you know, I kind of look at my music as, um, my kind of opportunity to talk about how I dealt with those very same issues and spirituality is definitely a huge part of how I dealt with all of it. So, um, you know, from studying, various you know pagan traditions to buddhism to hinduism and 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 whatnot that i i really feel you know that there's an equal number of people that are in the same boat as i that i am that sort of don't can't really deal with the status quo and can't really understand why things are the way they are and so they're sort of looking for alternatives and you know if you look up there's some movies and some films that i'm really into like zeitgeist and um Chimotica and a couple different ones that sort of talk about evolution and sort of what what's going on in the world and I think that um, they're very popular as well so I mean I think that there's a support for it um, and the new age movement in general you know which obviously encompasses a million different things seems to me to be very strong um, so I'd like to say yes to your question they're hungry <laughs> So I've got one more question for you. We, in, in, in paganism, we have sort of an, an interesting relationship with, with musicians. We either have people who tend to be very folky, who are, who are very hardcore pagan, and then we have people that we embrace that kind of hold us at arm's length. And mm -hmm. you're sort of, you're sort of on, on the liminal edge of that. You know, you're reaching out to the pagan community like you reached out to PCP, but mm -hmm. you also have sort of a broader message and you don't uh, solely identify with the pagan label. Would yeah. you be interested in, in, in engaging with the pagan community by going to like pagan festivals and, con and conventions? Is that something that you would be interested in doing? Yeah, actually, I would. I mean, I've, I've always been drawn to it. I've always been um, enamored and, and like felt a connection to, to that kind of um, community and to the, the sort of traditions that you do. I mean, I think I'm very into it. I, I, it's like it's one of those things where for a long time I've been, I've been interested in so many different things that I haven't. And they, to me, they all fall under the realm of sort of, um, oneness, spirituality, kind of, you know, um, I don't want to say anti-religion, but just kind of the, the other side. And so I'm, I'm very interested in it and I feel drawn to it and have felt drawn to it. Um, you know, especially I, I would just love to kind of get, you know, direct feedback um, from that community as well and just kind of, like, what's important. You know, to me, it's all about, in terms of people in the world, like, what's important to to you, what, you know, what matters. And that's, you know, hopefully one day I can be someone that can, through my music, really represent all sorts of different voices. And, you know, yours is a voice that I really highly respect and find a lot of my own soul calling to, you know, as, as if it... A lot of it feels like past life in a way to me. And so, you know, um, yes, I'm very interested. Um, can I throw <clears throat> my two cents in here? Um, uh, all right. I'll go, call, go ahead. 
<laughs> but um, one thing that uh, you were saying about um, the the new the spirituality and stuff, it seems where is a lot of your ideas may be paganized. Um, they're actually more geared towards spiritual spirituality and um, even new age ideas more so whether it is pagan or Christian, Buddhist, so on and so forth. So um, you're just looking at more so generalized, generalized ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another one there, but I forgot it. So I uh, hopefully we'll remember it and come back to it. Okay. <laughs> Sam, you said you had something? Yeah, and it, it kind of ties into what, what Star and what Brandon have been talking about. Um, in identifying with the pagan community, but not necessarily subscribing to it, do you feel that perhaps your music is coming across as a, you know, jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of conundrum? Because <laughs> I noticed that there's a lot of different topics from all different regions in your music, you know, you go from, from Hinduism to Buddhism to some general New Age topic, and then there's some goddess names that show up in some of your music. And I wonder, um, you know, getting involved with the pagan community, um, do you worry that perhaps you're going to isolate yourself, kind of picking from so many broad generalizations that you're not going to be giving due respect to the traditions that you're touching upon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I mean, I definitely um, think that that's certainly something that I, that I don't want um, because I really do. I mean, like I, I said earlier, you know, I feel very strongly that, you know, whatever people believe is okay. And I don't, I don't, sort of label myself, but at the same time, you know, feel drawn to certain things, as you mentioned, and paganism, you know, really being one of them, but um, there certainly is that potential that, you know, maybe I'm kind of stretched too thin or touching on too many different things at once, but, um, you know, I, I guess I just have to kind of have faith that, you know, whatever is kind of meant to to be in that realm will will be and I'm kind of just you know continuing my own growth and my own study and my own understanding of 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 all of it so that I can kind of follow wherever I'm going but yeah I mean I've always been someone that's interested in so many different things and that's been a a stumbling block for me throughout my life because I do kind of I get interested in some in in so many different realms of maybe the same thing, which you know, in this case, being kind of why things are the way they are, maybe as a, as a blanket statement. And Ke yes, Kelly, that may that may actually be the definition of of pagan, right? There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many different things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Actually, here's a yeah. a thought to consider. I mean, we got a somewhat decently broad spectrum of uh, paths in here. Mm -hmm. If uh, you wanted to ask any questions. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, w I would definitely, um, you know, be interested to kind of hear, um, you know, if there was sort of one kind of singular message that you feel is important in terms of your different traditions and, and your belief system that you have individually. Cause I, I mean, I, from, you know, from what I, it's like you said, it's sort of there, there's a lot of different ways to look at the same, you know, everybody has their own perspective. I'd love to hear in a couple words or a sentence or two kind of what is important to you and what, you know, kind of keeps you in this tradition. Who wants to take it first? Oh, I, I have. More I than nominate a couple Barrett of Allen. <laughs> <laughs> go Barrett, go. Um, Is he awake? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm here. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to be put on the spot. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, let's see, overall message of heathenry and or Ossetru. Wow, that that's a hard one. Um, it's li living, live your life to the best of to the best it can be. Uh, live your life with honor and hospitality, and work well with the people around you. Mm -hmm. That would be my faith. Um, how about Peter next? <laughs> sure, put me on the spot. Why not? How about, how about the divine is in everything? Yes. You want just a few words? <laughs> I, 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 I like that. <laughs> well, I, I actually have, have, have more than just a, a few words. I, I, because of what I do, I sort of interact with a bunch of different types of pagans. Um, but one thing I, I, I've noticed, um, and I'm, I'm probably going on a tangent, and I apologize, but y'all know I'm tangential, um, is there's been some discussion lately about um, whether or not Lady Gaga is is promoting goddess spirituality, especially with her latest Born This Way video. And you and you talk about Isis, and, and I kind of think that that's a powerful thing because a lot of pagans really venerate feminine divinity. So, yeah, so if I were to say something, you know, that sort of relates to my own practice that I think is cool that you do and that I would kind of like to see you, you explore more, it would be that, that idea of feminine divinity. Mm-hmm. Now, see, I have a different take on that because of the Egyptian base. The idea of bringing up Isis um, is kind of a hot topic. And I know that this is not uh, what a lot of the New Age goes with, is that Isis is not pleasant. <laughs> she She's kind of bloodthirsty. And um, I think with me, the idea is making sure that the spirituality is one thing, but I also have a focus in researching um, anthropology and um, myths and making sure that people are getting the right idea rather than going to the quickest New Age book and going, oh, Isis, she's like the mother of all when they're missing out that she she raised her kid to be a psychopath. She, she went and, and poisoned her father. And this was, you know, a whole... So right. that's part of my issue. But, you know, she was also, though, she was also characterized as, like, mother of all and mother of many names. So she's got sort of that dual thing, but a lot of goddesses do. Yeah, but that's after the Greeks took it over. Yeah, yeah, once she, like, her, <laughs> when she went on her international tour, to put it music terms. Yeah. <laughs> well, after, after, um, the whole murder thing with, with Horace and Set, um, her son chopped her head off and put the head, and her father was like, oops, hmm, to teach you to be humble, we're gonna stick the head of a cow on you. And that's <laughs> when she actually calmed down. So there, there's two aspects, and everybody seems to forget that there are two not just the calm version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I really think that um, I, I totally get where you're coming from on that, and I I've definitely looked into ISIS on on many different levels, um, and really the reason that that was there um, and that I chose her is, I mean, I I think in every at least in my study of goddesses and goddess culture and all that kind of stuff, there's always like, part of why I feel more drawn to feminine divinity is because of this sort of dualistic side. Like, there's a good and a bad, you know? And maybe it's just because I'm, you know, reading tarot versions and things like that and that I'm seeing more of both sides. But, um, you know, I just really resonate with her as being powerful. And you can use your power for good and bad and you know, I always just kind of loved the story of her putting her, you know, her husband back together and all that kind of stuff. But I, I do understand what you're saying. And, and, I, and I think for myself, as I move forward, when I am, 
using things, you know, words and um, specifically archetypes and goddesses and things like that. And, you know, I might do a little bit more research to really make sure that I'm 100% positive. But to be honest with her, I really felt that way. I really felt that a connection. And I mean, every time I, I can't even describe all of the weird synchronicities and times where Isis has kind of like come into my consciousness, whether it was through a, a tarot card reading or whether it was someone telling me a story about it or whatever. It was, I, I always felt some kind of connection to her. And that song was actually written when I went for the weekend to a, um, a weekend long conference to see the hugging saint, Amma, I don't know if you're familiar, but she's a living saint, um, from India. And she, you know, that experience was just totally amazing. And then I saw Ani DeFranco that evening and I just felt like I was just surrounded it, surrounded by goddesses. And that song sort of came out like Isis just, you know, it wasn't like I thought about it, oh, I want to write Isis, or I don't want to, you know, just that song, I felt just divinely inspired and wrote it actually during the concert. So, you know, but I, I do, I do think that, that that I have a responsibility, especially now that I'm in a position where people are, are paying attention, that I need to make sure that I'm aware of, of the full story, so that then I can, you know, I might still make the decision to use it, to use whatever it may be controversy or not, but at least I'm fully aware. I think um, <clears throat> I was very hesitant on this episode, but I definitely wanted to be here. Um, I know after listening to some of your music, especially the one dealing with ISIS, and then the, the misinterpretation with the um, your first messages to us about the, the whole reading and everything else, I I was not necessarily sure. Hold on, let me back up a step. Um, I think that your li the way you put your lyrics together and your sound is incredible. Um, but I wasn't really sure about the lyrics themselves and if you were just sort of going off of what was popular at the time and had done a little bit of the research and seeing where the culture was going. Um, I think that was my biggest worry. Um, whether or not this was going to be a quote-unquote fighter view. I don't know if you'd heard that, uh, that <laughs> term in any of our past podcasts. Um, but I think that I think this is turning out to be a, a very good interview and um, no, you're not just a poser trying to get uh, attention. So I've been very, very happy about uh, this interview. So I I'm just want to throw that out to you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that very much. And, um, you know, I, I can definitely assure you that I, it was almost like the opposite. I, I really didn't feel like when I really became super serious about you know, kind of like, this is my calling and this is what I'm doing. I really didn't think I would have any support. It wasn't like I thought that culturally I was going to have, you know, this movement that, that I've now become aware of behind me. I really, I really didn't. Um, I'm, I'm thankful because that to me just means there's more people out there that are, you know, becoming aware of, of what, you know, what really needs attention in the universe. And, and I love the, you know, divinity is in all things. I mean, that's, I was on another interview pretty recently with a gentleman, uh, another MC, his name is um, um, a Apollo, um, Apollo Poetry. And you guys should definitely check him out. He's kind of like the male version of me, some people say. And we met in Sedona um, a while back and, you know, he said it's like it's hard for for me and, and for him, too, to kind of even know what to call ourselves. And that's why I've sort of gone label-less because would I just really do believe in every... It's like I believe in divinity and all things. And um, every day I learn something new through study that just, you know, changes changes me a little bit. And, you know, I'm just really thankful that there are people like you guys really dealing with this in a in a fashion that you know kind of keeps up with the times and podcasting and and you know making it 
available for people as an, as an outlet to connect. I think it's pretty awesome. You know, Kelly, I actually found your music in a in sort of a funny way. I was actually complaining that there wasn't any pagan rap music, that it was all all folk singers playing Celtic music, and uh, and someone sent me your video, and I was like, well, what do you know? <laughs> was that me? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I think it was you, Scurvy. I think you were the one who sent me her video, and I was like, oh, well, this is just cool. <laughs> I think we got a little bit off topic. Um, I know that we were going around the table saying about uh, things from our path and sort of trying to nudge it back on topic. And yeah. Oh, thanks, Brian. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm actually keeping us on topic. It's scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I personally consider myself to be a theurgist with... Um, more of a concentration in science and uh, dealing with metaphysics, um, but I do believe in pretty much all gods and goddesses, and they're out there, and just depends on who picks you more so than than um, you picking them. Yeah. But um, I think the biggest thing from what I've come across is don't do things blindly, um, be educated, um, just because something sounds good, go with it, but do a little bit of research in it and see if it just sounds good and somebody's not just blowing smoke up you. Right. Um, and, um, also look at, um, look at history, look at culture, look at, um, the actual science behind some of this stuff, um, it's sort of interesting. Um, so it's all starting to fit together, and I know it fits together in my head. But mm -hmm. And um, I think I'm going to choose Saturn for the next one. Saturn, my ruling planet. <laughs> I think Saturn wants to go eat. Oh. oh he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's here. He's here. Is there? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm just munching, so I'm having my microphone off. And yes, Saturn is my planet, too. Nice. I have it tattooed on my back. I keep meaning to get the symbol done <laughs> on me, but I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> right now, it's sitting on Virgo's back, which looks kind of nifty. Nice. <laughs> So, love, if you could put a, a message out, what would it be? Or something that you would like focused on? Are we talking to Saturn or to mm -hmm. me? Saturn, love, I know you are there. If I had a message to put out, what would it be? Mm -hmm. With your path. Stop screwing up the planet. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting pissed. Uh, I like that. <laughs> I, I just, I just wrote uh, my intro to my new album. Says that um, Mother Earth is getting hotter. You forgot her, and now she's pissed and igniting her daughters. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're nice. having several natural disasters a year. I'm pretty sure she's mad. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so who hasn't gone yet? Have we gotten... We haven't gotten Joe or Kara. Well, or Sam. Or Sam. Some of us are trying to be in the background right now. Uh, well, you're not in the background, Joe. You are in the foreground. Go! <laughs> I love you, Amber. From the heart. I love you, too. <laughs> Brandon, you're closer. Share the love for me. But, uh... Hold on, let me find something to throw. Ah, <coughs> uh, well, um... Ah, uh, yeah. Me and spirituality, um... Oh, a lot of silence here. <laughs> we could always have Sam go while you think. I'm just trying to s figure out how to say it um, okay. in the least offensive manner possible. This is new for you. 
Why change now? <laughs> right? Uh, naturally, I'm somewhat antagonistic to the thought of deity. Um, and a couple other things. So, yeah, I'll work out real well later, but... Uh, <clears throat> beginning to develop relations with one, more or less. I wouldn't quite call it worship, but... Uh, it works for me. Uh, otherwise, spirituality-wise, believe a lot in reincarnation, all the fun stuff. And, uh, yes, yeah, someone else's turn to suffer. <laughs> so we have Sam and Kara, and I think that's everybody. I don't think you went either. I went. Okay. Did Peter go? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, I it was can... weird. I actually kept it with two words. <laughs> uh, I'm a Hellenic polytheist, so the religion that was practiced in uh, Greece in ancient times that that is the religion that we are reviving. Um, we're we're past the construction reconstruction stage, and and uh, it's it's now a, a fairly decent sized thriving religion. Um, you know, for our religion, um, you know, it's your basis in your household, your household worship, and you you honor the gods, and as a person, you seek to do excellence in this world, um, and remember that, you know, prayer can accomplish wonderful things, um, you know, and when you get into the Reconstructionist religions, or the ones that are reviving, you know, they, they tend to be structured religions, um, and some people are horrified by how close our rituals are to Catholic rituals because they modeled them after ours. So. <laughs> right. I thought I got filtered through Rome first. Oh. Sam! Well, actually, it was Paul. Paul won, so. Mm. Sam, you lost. Sam. Calling Sam. Where's <laughs> Sam? I saw a thing flash I'm here. I'm here. I'm okay. here. I forgot to unmute my mic. Ah. <laughs> but I, I can't complain about having the most amount of time to think. But, um, I don't know. Things for me right now are up in the air. I, I definitely have a, a strong metaphysical background uh, as far as as energy work and in understanding kind of the ebb and flow of, of the universe, I definitely believe in. Um, and although I do believe in the validity of other people's deities, I don't particularly ascribe to any um, any tradition or any, any pantheon myself. So really, I guess... I don't really represent anybody, but the the message, I guess, that I try to put out to the people that, that interact with me, um, and then hopefully they can pick up on it, um, is that family is important, um, and family is, is what you make of it. Um, family is, is definitely not genetics, and that it is an absolute privilege and a blessing to have people that matter in your life and that those are the people that you need to to honor and to think um, you know keeping your thoughts when you uh, before you act um, but I, I don't really know if that fits into any pantheon or you know I'm just here trying to trying to find my bliss I guess Mm. And whether or not it fits into a pantheon, I think it's still good. <laughs> Definitely. Well, of course you do, Amber. You're one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly, I got a question. Uh huh. Where do you get your information on the pagan community? Do you follow like the websites or the blogs or any of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, just, just Googling, I'm a constant Googler, and, um, you know, anytime I hear something new or 
you know, sometimes I feel I I hear something from maybe like a gathering that I go to. I have a, a women's group that I meet with every month or I read different things. And, you know, once I hear a word that I don't understand or, um, you know, an idea that I want to hear more about, I just Google it. And, um, you know, I mean, there's the Internet is like nonstop. So do you follow any of the specific pagan blogs or you just kind of just Google individual things? Um, I mean, mostly I Google individual things. I've been, um, since I kind of started to recognize that there were podcasts and things like, like you guys, I'm definitely um, trying to make it part of my regular, um, you know, work day, so to speak, to really be reading, um, you know, blog posts and listening to um, podcasts and whatnot. I, I, I can't say that I'm, I'm doing it as much as I want to, but I have so many, um, you know, my life right now is in this huge transition, I feel, um, in that I'm, I'm really trying to make music my, you know, my life, what I breathe and what I eat. So um, as that becomes more and more a reality, I'll have more and more time to, to follow the trends of what's going on and kind of hear, you know, I, I like I really love the fact that you guys all have so many I mean pretty much everything that everyone said I completely um agree with you know, I, I feel um the same way and, and it's really interesting to, you know, know that there's communities out there that I can be a part of and that, you know, might feel drawn to my music because, you know, certainly I, I hear more often than not that people don't understand at all what I'm talking about. So I love the idea that, you know, the very things that you just mentioned are part of your path or the very things that I write about and I feel passionate about. Um, so I'm definitely going to be paying more and more attention as time goes on. Well, being as you didn't come up with the name of a blog that you follow, I'm going to give you one. Try the Pagan Portal with Pathios. The girl that runs that's awesome. She's a little snarky sometimes, but she's pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, watch out here, Mr. Diving. I will not have my name public. <laughs> yeah, Star Star Foster, Star Foster can be a little bit of a head. She can be a little bit of a poo poo head sometimes, but we love her. <laughs> I will definitely, I will definitely check it out. I did know that you that you wrote a blog, and I did see a couple posts, but I need to, like I said, I need to develop a discipline around, um, particularly pagan. Um, okay. You know, blogs and podcasts, I know I need to. Okay, here's the Have easy you... way to do it. Friend, Star Foster, and Peter Dibing, and especially Dave on on Facebook, okay? Okay, wait. Here's the problem with that. So I'm at my I'm at my Facebook limit right now. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get rid of someone in order to do that, but I'm willing to. I feel I feel a connection to you guys. So What's your? Can you tell me the names again, or maybe Amber? Could you maybe email that to me? Sure. Awesome. So, so I have a quick question. Um, oh. um, I have a friend who's uh she's a Hellenic polytheist like like Kara is, and and she's uh very into, I think it's the Lions. She she chose her football team like based on on uh, for spiritual reasons. I think. <laughs> Anyways. So you're a, you're a Steelers fan, and I was wondering, like, you know, aside from the fact that you you know you're a Steelers fan and you're from Pittsburgh and you like football, um, is, is there like any connection to like the idea of Steelers workers? I'm 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 devoted to Hephaestus, the Greek god of of blacksmithing. So so I'm always yeah. curious about religious uh, or spiritual uh, Steelers fans. Right. Um, you know, I can't say that there's any. Um direct connection like that necessarily um but kind of like in a roundabout way i um probably my favorite two of my favorite stones that i always um happen upon and carry with me and give to others and things is jet and um, hematite they're both black stones um and i always kind of feel for whatever reason i've, I've often thought of hematite in relationship to the Steelers, I mean, I guess it's because it's the same kind of color or whatever, but um, I've not, I don't have, you know, any any sort of, like, you know, goddess of, 
of a particular of steel or something like that. But I, I do, um, I have felt since I, I think I would say one of the big, when I really became like connected to connected to my spirituality, I was, um, I didn't sleep for like seven days and I was just really in another realm I felt. And, um, you know, it wasn't drug induced. There was no reason for it. Um, and during that time I went to a Steelers game it was my first ever Steelers game, and I, my father had always talked about wanting to go, and he had passed away just before that, and so I kind of was like, okay, I'm going to go and kind of honor him in that way, and he always was scared of heights, so I, I sat at the very, very, very top, you know, being that he had passed on, I knew he wouldn't be afraid anymore, and I went to the very top, and I remember just, you know, maybe it was my psychosis of not sleeping for that long, but I was just writing furiously and I was writing songs and I was like, they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. And I, and this was their preseason game. And I turned to my boyfriend at the time and I was like, I know they're going to win the Super Bowl. You know, I'm writing it down in this notebook right now. And they won the Super Bowl that year. Um, And, you know, so I've, I've always had this, like when we watched the Super Bowl this past time, I really felt like, our ego needed to, to not win as much as I wanted to win. I, I sat there with, I had a, um, a huge amethyst and a huge, um, uh, clear quartz crystal with me at, in the middle of a bar. Everyone of course was making fun of me. And I was just like, I could feel that we were probably not going to win. And it was just this crazy experience of like, every time I would start watching the television, something bad would happen. And then I would, stop watching and we would start winning and I was just having this fun kind of like feeling connected to to the whole thing so there's definitely a spiritual connection between my love for them for the Steelers but um you know and I could I could go on there's many other instances where things like that have happened (laughs) so the big question is did you place a bet for the Steelers to win at the beginning of the season (laughs) Not not that year. No, I wish I did because I was I was one hundred percent certain, and I knew nothing about football prior to that. And I and I really, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I I love the Steelers and I and I root for them, and I totally feel the fever when I'm here in the city, but I still don't even fully understand football. So you know, I I didn't make a bet, I didn't do anything, but I just knew for certain that they that you know we would win. I think that um, you could almost say that the Steeler craze or whatever you want to call it is borderline religion. Uh, <laughs> and, and if you look at the aspects of it, I see here in the um, the chat room on Skype um, that, you know, the idea of talismans and, you know, just the general energy put forth is the same that most of these people, if not greater, put towards their church. Um, Whether you, whatever path you happen to follow. And I think spirituality does not necessarily, if you look at it, as I said, mine is more of a scientific point of view. Um, If you look at the, the chi or your personal energy that you put towards something, and that's where the metaphysics and, and magic and whatever else um, prayer go, comes in, it, you are basically causing a religion mm-hmm. um, using that those energies. And if mm-hmm. you have that many people putting that much energy towards something, um, I feel that you can have an effect on the world around you. Um, actually, it's been proven that you can have an effect on the world around you. Yes. Yeah, I I believe that. I mean, I believe that 100%. And I test the theory of of physics and, you know, thoughts become things. I, I test that every day. And I, I 100% believe that Steeler Nation is, is the reason that the Steelers are as magical as they are. And, um, you know, I think this past loss was sort of a lesson, but... Um, at the same time, you know, it's it's interesting how I think the underlying 
realm though of the Steeler fever is that Pittsburgh, you know, was was a steel a city that had such incredible industry here and then completely fell apart and, you know, people were forced to move all over the country to, you know, find work when the steel in- industry collapsed and so it really I think that the power that you're talking about the kind of almost a religion it's it's so powerful because the people who were born here and are so incredibly like loyal to the city and to the Steelers are those very people that, you know, had to move and their families had to move. And it's like, it just that loyalty and that blue collar mentality that goes along with those type, that type of people. It's like the, the fever just kind of gets passed down through generations. Um, and it's so powerful because of that there's actually a video called Steeler nation and, and then you watch it and it talks, it tells the whole story about it and how there's a Steeler bar in every major city in the country. And it just makes you cry almost to think about, about that energy. But at the same time, it makes me cry because I'm like, why aren't we putting our energy into something that's not so such a multi-billion dollar, you know, industry that's, you know, promoting all sorts of things that really aren't doing us that good, that much good. But, you know. At least it's a case in point for people like you that have that theory. I got to tell you, I understand the whole Steeler thing because I'm a Nebraska Cornhusker fan, and we we definitely have that whole thing. But I'll tell you, when you when you go to a game in Lincoln and there's the whole pregame warm up, which I'm not just talking about drinking, but the whole pregame warm up, and um, you know they they do this thing to get the fans really excited in the beginning, and it's a whole multimedia thing and the fans are standing and the cheering is building over a period of of longer than 15 minutes and when you know when the players finally come out there's such a release from the entire stadium of people and it really is a religious experience when you have (laughs) that many people you know putting forth and being entirely focused on one single thing, you know, you have that very, you know, very connected thing to everyone in that stadium. Um, it's kind of an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. That that happens at, at music concerts too, where where you have yeah. like you know whole groups of people raising insane amounts of energy, uh, you know, around a musical act. It's kind of cool. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the the biggest thing is like that moment, of, you know, that that trigger of release or that that moment, you know, and having that many people share that with you at that exact same time, it's it's a pretty amazing thing, and I think that's probably what people in mystery religions, you know, back when that was, um, you know, more the norm, uh, I think that's what they experienced. Definitely. Yeah, and for the concerts, I have a friend, and she's very into music, very, very, very. And, you know, she'll tell you, music is her religion. Like, flat Mm -hmm. out, that's her religion. And, you know, the place where she goes to worship is concerts. That's -hmm. that's her religious experience. Yeah. Yeah, I got my, my favorite. If I do have to ever say, you know... If I if I had to absolutely put a label on myself, I say like that love is my religion, and I got that from Ziggy Marley. <laughs> He's not a bad person to listen to. No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> I know. I I actually feel sick if I don't get any kind of dose of live music. Like it, <laughs> it's so important, and it's it's something that resonates so deeply with humanity. You know, music, <clears throat> traditional music goes back so far, and it's so ingrained in us at this point. Um, I was really fortunate to start going to live events uh, when I was five. And uh, it it really just changed, I think. It, it maybe not changed, but definitely kind of paved the pathway into to who I became now. And, and now it's almost like a like a need of mine, like it has to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's wonderful um, research out about you know musical beats and the effect they have on on brain chemistry, 
um, on endorphin and serotonin levels, on allowing people to access uh, alpha wave consciousness. So there really is a, a connection. Um, and it's usually at 120 beats per minute that people really start to switch over their brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a lot of, um, not even like new age um, music or music that's put out primarily for meditation, but a lot of mainstream music that becomes popular tends to have 120 beat per minute rhythm to it. And I think it really taps into something that's just a, a part of humanity. Yeah, I actually um, am very, very interested in sound healing and um, the very thing that you're talking about. Uh, unfortunately, the interest, I mean, I've always been interested in it, but I didn't really have the resources around me. Um, but more recently, I've started to connect with um, some people that study, you know, the sa study sound in general and, you know, indigenous, even, you know, Mayan um a uh, gentleman who's indigenous to Guatemala is coming to Pittsburgh and he has an entire workshop that he's going to be doing based on, you know, your Mayan birthday and um, how it sort of gives you a, a chant that's kind of the whole idea of it is sort of taking you from the frequency of fear to the frequency of love. And, um, and I've been in various situations where I've learned, you know, and, and experienced the healing nature of sound both at concerts and through workshops and things like that. And um, I have a, a producer that I'm working with now, Cynic Lethal. He's um, one of my producers that does several of my songs that he's really working with me. Probably won't be so much in this next album. I'm going to definitely use like some tuning forks that, that I've been using in different um, practice that I'm going to, use at the beginning and end of songs and things like that but um so maybe not so much in this album will i have you know have really mastered the sound so that i can be aware of its potential but you know in, in future music that's something that i'm very very interested in and if i were if i were someone that played music if i could actually play keyboard or something like that i would probably have started this this um journey to learn more about it much sooner but now i'm just kind of working with other people that have the same interests and trying to build music from that because I, I really do think there's so much power in it you, you know kelly one thing i wanted to ask you because it's something that that you know i, I i've had conversations with like peter about recently um you 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 put a lot of spirituality into into your music um, do you do you have people coming to you looking for spiritual guidance or advice, and and how do you deal with that? Um, I I don't think anybody's necessarily emailed me and said I need advice, but I would say that I definitely, um, certainly within my own community, um, I do kind of get asked those sorts of you know questions like what do you think about this or that and. Um, you know, if I know someone, I'll definitely give my, you know, my thoughts and, and kind of tap into my intuition as to how to handle those sorts of things. But when it's someone that I don't know, um, it becomes a little more challenging, but I have gotten a lot of interesting, like one, one girl in particular, um, who I would probably classify as, as a pagan based on what she, some of the practices that she does and things um, she was only 16 and she emailed me and told me that she is, uh, I guess, I don't think she's formally been diagnosed with schizophrenia, but she's definitely got some kind of disorder where she hallucinates and she sees really scary, um, really unsettling things when, when she goes into this sort of trance state and has these hallucinations. And she emailed me and said that she put my music that her friend found my music and put my music in they were driving in a car and that she started seeing like flowers coming from the dashboard and she just described this whole like array of bright beautiful colored hallucinations and I you know I read this email from her it was this beautifully I, mean, I couldn't believe that she was 16 when she told me but um I, you know I cried and I was just so 
moved by the fact that, you know, this was happening to her and it really inspired me to continue. But throughout the dialogue, you know, she kind of started to ask me, you know, how did I get, you know, obviously my music has some kind of power with her, with her, with her being. And so she was sort of asking me, where did, where do I get these ideas from? Where did all of this come from? You know, what do I study? What do I do? Do I meditate? You know, things like that. So I shared with her, you know, the types of meditation I do and the types of practice I do and stuff like that. And, you know, but I, it was one of those things where I didn't really know what to do. I didn't really know how to kind of respond other than, you know, just be someone that she can write to and, and talk to if she wants, you know, via email. And I offered, you know, I said that I would be glad to like talk to her on the phone or something like that because she was so happy and so excited that this was happening to her. Um, you know, that's kind of an extreme example of, of someone reaching out to me, but I have had people on, you know, Facebook message me sort of saying, oh, this is going on with my boyfriend or my girlfriend or I'm having, you know, this problem and, you know, do you have any, you know, any words of wisdom or something like that? And, you know, I try my best to, to offer them something that they can, you know, take from it. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a guru. I, you know, I try to just put whatever I know in the music and I don't want to tell people what to do or not to do. But it's been pretty cool, you know, thus far in that realm. Yeah, yeah it's, talking it's about. An, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sir. Talking about people reaching out to you. Um, you're talented. You're attractive. Creepy stalkers, maybe. <laughs> Is that a problem? Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a problem at this point. I haven't had anybody you know, calling my phone or emailing me incessantly or anything like that. There's certainly some people like on Facebook who, you know, sort of comment a little off color here and there. Um, you know, but I, I just, I really, I'm at a point in my life where I really do just have like an incredible amount of love for all people and all things. I mean, I'm like one of those people that I just, I don't, I'm not really capable of being mad for long periods of time or really being angry or I mean I you know I have my my reactionary human response to various things but I really tend to just sort of see anything that creeps me out as just you know it's just sort of someone calling for attention or just sort of needing some love that they're not getting from somewhere else so I just you know if somebody says oh I love you you're so hot or whatever it is you know I just say I love you too and and I find that because I don't take offense or I don't tell them to leave me alone or I don't give them any reason to think that they've, you know, offended me, it doesn't seem that anything has gotten strange or, or uncomfortable for me to this point. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, one, one of the things, though, um, I, I think is interesting, and it's going to be interesting to, to, like, talk to you, like, a year or so down the road, is that, um, you know, and, and th some of the things I do, people tend to mistake me for a, a spiritual leader or a counselor. And I can see that as being something that you'll encounter again and again. And, um, and yeah, so I was just sort of curious how you had handled that. Because I know, I know that as you, as you become more popular, that that's something that's going to, uh, to uh, happen more often. And, and it's an interesting thing. It's a weird thing when, when, when people reach out to you like that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've I've certainly gotten the the cult leader thing has been has been uh, I've heard that quite a bit, but that's just been on YouTube comments. It's not been anything that anybody's come to me and, you know, said anything like that, but um yeah, I mean, I I I look forward to interacting with more and more people and I just, you know, I hope that it's positive in nature and I definitely, you know, um, know my boundaries as far as what what I think is appropriate, and hopefully I make the right choices. Maybe I'll call you and ask you how to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm always like, yeah, I'm not the person to ask. And I, and I keep interrupting Scurvy, because that's what I do. Yeah. I, like, know when he's going to speak, and I interrupt him. Sorry. Don't worry, I'll be in the lake later. You can swim, right? <laughs> well, I I was on your Facebook the other day, and I noticed some people uh, ask you to do uh, 
benefit concerts and all that stuff for them. How do you handle mm -hmm. that? Um, well, in the past, um, over the, like, I would say the last, I don't know, let's say three years since I've been really performing on a regular basis, um, I pretty much, up until, I would say, four or five months ago, said yes to everyone. And I did literally every, I mean, I've done so many benefit-related sort of things um, in the last couple of years. I don't even, I probably couldn't necessarily count them, but um, I've definitely, over the last six months, I've really sort of stopped um, and kind of made it known even on Facebook and stuff that I'm, I'm going to just be really focused on creating new music um, and not really doing shows. However, when I get asked to do benefits, if I am available and I feel I can be prepared, like I'm actually probably going to be doing a benefit in Pittsburgh in June um, for uh, a little girl that has cystic fibrosis. And um, I just kind of felt connected to the guy that was putting it together. So I'm probably going to do that. And, um, you know, it's, for me, I like, I love that sort of, you know, situation and I feel, I feel really good about it. And if I can, you know, help someone raise money or get across a message or something that I feel I resonate with, I definitely do it if I can. But I've really stopped performing over the last six months because I just, I'm at a point where I want new, I want to be performing new music. And I know that I had to just kind of pick you know, instead of spreading myself thin, which is something that I've, I've done in the past, I had to really pick where I was going to put my energy. And I knew that if I could spend a really focused amount of time on my business, that it would come to a point where then I could focus more on the recording and then, you know, really be able to focus on performance, which will, you know, probably start late summer, I imagine, or maybe earlier. How do you find that balance between finding the time to to be creative because you, you need to almost withdraw a little bit for to do that and yet you also have to promote yourself and perform and you have your other job and you know you're in the events industry and all that how how in the hell do you balance all that <laughs> well I would say that um, over the past two years I've balanced it and I haven't probably balanced it very well necessarily but um, you know, when it comes to my business, there's this real direct kind of like, it's definitely been my top priority because, A, it's, how, you know, I, I got to feed myself and pay my bills and things like that. And also, I'm just so committed to the people in my business and to it being something that can survive without while I'm doing creative endeavors and things like that. So, I definitely, that's been a, my primary focus for the last couple of years. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky in that that is supportive of my musical endeavor, too, because my, it's my best friends. I mean, I work with my soul sisters, and they're very supportive of my music, of my message. And so, you know, they've started to really work in tandem over the last year, and now I'm really transitioning to focus more on music. But, yeah, I mean, it, it you know, it becomes about really just getting present in the moment and, and doing whatever it is I need to do because I can get myself really caught up in the lists and the countless emails. And, you know, on top of that, I'm really committed as an artist to being really prompt and responding to people and doing what I say I'm going to do in that realm. So it, it does get overwhelming. But, you know, I've just sort of started to become you know, really serious about like, okay, I'm going to meditate and then I'm going to write and that's what I'm going to do for the next three hours. And, you know, then I'll get back to these emails and to these people and to, you know, my business partners and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's a constant, it's a constant sort of reevaluation of what's important moment to moment. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely at least over the next year making a very, very serious effort to make music the most important thing that I do. And I see that as something that will then give back to my business because, you know, certainly we'll get clients and we'll get things, I'm sure, you know, through the connections that I make and then eventually be able to help other artists like me through the work that we've done and hopefully that we're successful at doing, which will eventually be, you know, at this point my music is free, but hopefully, you know, we're able to create revenue streams through performance and 
um, eventually maybe selling some of the music if need be to kind of keep it, keep it all going. Now you've said that you're a conscious performer and that you, you know, a lot of the things that you're talking about, you're describing a lot to do with ethics, but how, how are you living your ethics presently in your life? Like what are some things that, that you do that show your ethics to someone on the outside? Well, um, I'm definitely very committed, um, to the community that I live in. Um, I, I very much believe in, you know, that children are kind of, you know, it's like the cliche that the youth are the future. Um, but it's true. And, um, you know, I've definitely been putting some time into, you know, little things that I, that I know are helpful on a small macrocosm. Like I visited a girl, um, who is in the hospital with a pretty like terminal disease and she's in a, you know, she wants, she's an aspiring hip hop artist. And so I spent, you know, the afternoon with her on her birthday and I'm, I'm currently working on creating an opportunity to mentor, um, with a local organization called hip hop unlock that does, um, some really great things in the community. And up to this point, I didn't really have the time, but I'm, I'm really committed to that because I think that that will, you know, it's a give and take. It'll really, inspire me and then make me, you know, really feel like I'm having an impact on the youth. Um, and then, you know, like I, I definitely am still politically involved in, on, on different realms. Um, you know, I try to share information on my Facebook page that are relevant to society and what's going on in the world, um, whether it be other artists or movies or films or things like that to raise awareness for things. Um, and, you know, like my, there's a community meeting tomorrow night, for example, and I have another meeting to go to, but I, I, you know, spent some time kind of trying to connect some of the community leaders that are working with youth and whatnot to some people that are attending the meeting because it, the whole meeting is about the allocation of all this funding that's coming into our community that, you know, traditionally will get spent on like paving roads and doing, um, you know, tearing down abandoned buildings instead of, you um, you know, after school programs and things like that. So I just try to be involved and in, very, very, very involved in my spiritual community, which I feel um, it's, it, there's a group that's actually been formed called the Trans, uh, Pittsburgh Transformational Leaders. And they're, you know, scientists, healers, psychotherapists, religious leaders, um, a whole big group of people. And, you know, we work together and meditate together, you know, and I put the word out about all the all things like that that happened. We did something for Japan recently, and I kind of put out in the world like, "Hey, we're doing this," and you know, jump on board. And then the last thing I I would say I also do is um, I'm very involved in uh, landmark education. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I've gotten so 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 much from from that work that I've done th with with that um, education and. Um, I'm now involved in uh, a thing called the Introduction Leaders Program, which is, you know, basically a volunteer-based sort of situation where you're really learning the um, all sides of the education and then going out and, um, you know, uh, letting other people know about it. Um, so, you know, there's all, the, all sorts of different realms. And all those things, you know, really are what helped me to be grounded in my music, you know, because... My music is about all of those very things. So, um, you know, it's like a give and take, but I still feel like I'm giving back and I'm able to, you know, demonstrate a way to be that I think, you know, it works in the world. I I've well, got it sounds two like questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, go for it, sir. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, I see you have your, your music available for download. For, for those of us old fogies who like cover art and, and physical copies, CDs, um, are those going to be available, the, the music you already have out? And you said you were working on a CD. Do you know when that's going to, to be available, your new album? Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny you ask that because I'm not actually sure right now if I know that my CDs were available on CD Baby, which, as far as I know, would be the only way that you could get my CD as a physical CD. Um, now, that I did do, I, I've done promotions for a long, long time 
where I send CDs to people. Um, and it, when I did that, it was for free and it was just, you know, you just give me your email address. You're sort of like a lifelong fan that I update about everything that I'm doing. And then I would send a CD out, but that became obviously very, very expensive very quickly. And so I kind of had to stop doing that, but I did have some hard copies and I, so I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm on CD baby, but it just occurred to me that I haven't looked into that for a really long time. Um, but I hope, I mean, as far as, you know, a physical copy, anybody who's interested can go onto my website and email me with, there's a contact area. And, you know, even if you can't find it on another, in another way, we'll send it to you. Um, there's probably going to start being an expense for that because we, I don't even know that right now in terms of like an inventory that we have, um, any printed up, but, um, I hope to for the future album and the future album, which will uh, my third album that I'm working on currently will be probably like, um, I'm, I'm planning to put a date on it just to really create reality here, but, um, I haven't done that yet. And I, I plan to be at least have everything recorded and prepared to be mixed and mastered and whatnot by April 30th. So, um, you know, if I get it done before then, then, you know, so be it, but, um, and looking at around that time to be my, my end of the bargain, so to speak, to be complete. And then it'll go, you know, to my producers and then hopefully be released early summer, um, for the masses. And I, I believe it will be available for free download again, but we'll probably print, um, quite a, quite a few copies and I will be sure for, people such as yourself that you're describing that want physical CDs, I'll definitely make sure that that's an option. Awesome. I, I just checked your, you're not on CD Baby anymore. Um, and I'm a big fan of CD Baby. I love buying music through CD Baby. Um, so so that, to me, that would be awesome. They've always been good to, to non-mainstream and especially pagan artists in the past. So I always yeah. try to buy from them when when possible. So... We had a question in the chat room. Do you know or have heard of God, Death, and She? So could you say that it was God, Death? God, Death, and She. No, I don't think I have. And they also wanted to know why are there no links to the activism that you do? Huh. That's a good question. Um... Well, I mean, if you look at, just as an example, if you do, if you look into my lyrics um, on my video page, I have a description for each video. It's embedded on my website. I have a, all of my lyrics and then links that go to various websites and things like that, which, which kind of can somewhat give you like a genesis of a lot of the different theories. Um, which to me is, is activism, because if you can't understand my words um, and get my activism on that level, then this sort of helps you kind of understand where a lot of it comes from. And I'm still updating that. You know, it's a, it's a process. But as far as, you know, my, I guess, like local activism and things like that, I mean, if you were to look at my Facebook feed, just as an example, you would see, you know, all sorts of different things that I'm doing and um I, I definitely have the intention to, on my own pay, on my own website where there's links and stuff like that, to start linking to all the different organizations that I've worked with in the past, like the One Campaign and um, and various other groups that um, you know that I feel I should be kind of letting it be known that I support them and that I'm involved. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things where I, I was more concerned about just keeping myself involved instead of proving that I am, I guess. So, um, you know, I definitely will, as I spend more and more time focused on music, I'll, I'll definitely start spending more time making those things available and, and, you know, connecting people in that way. I know you mentioned way, way back that, uh, when you started, you didn't expect really to have anybody backing you. Was there anything experience-wise that was really memorable that was either a point where you questioned if this is what you're supposed to be doing 
or the other way around an experience that really confirmed for you that yes this is what you are supposed to be doing that was really deep hmm. um well truthfully that that story that i told you about the the little girl the 16 year old girl that wrote me um about her hallucination i, I mean i have to say that that um was very recent but it definitely no question solidified that I feel like I've made the right choice and that I'm doing the right thing. Um, and to be honest, I, you know, I've, I've worked really hard throughout my life, um, to keep myself at, in a place where I, you know, I have the confidence needed to do what I need to do, but I've struggled. I've always struggled with that and struggled with various other, you know, mental illness and, um, sort of extreme life circumstances and stuff like that that have happened that have stopped me or made me, you know, think maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to doing to be doing or I'm not good enough. Um, you know, I'm adopted and I um, sought out my biological mother and, you know, she didn't want to have anything to do with me. And I, you know, during that time, if I had been where I was now, I probably would have stopped making music because I just sort of lost all faith in in everything in myself and and whatnot but you know i through my spirituality and through all that i've learned about the universe and that everyone has a story like that and everyone has a hell and everyone has you know something that that happened to them that just tore them apart or whatever and um it's all about just kind of recognizing that you can choose to decide that it's you know going to form your life and create who you are and stop you from doing what you need to be doing or you can, you know, choose the opposite. And so every day I choose the opposite, and, and that's, you know, kind of a long answer to your question. But as far as um, um, a moment that, you know, specifically almost stopped me um, because I didn't have the support was, you know, I've had some different scenarios, and, you know, where maybe I'm performing and, and people are, um, you know, confused by what I'm saying or you know, see it as, I mean, there's so much kind of buzz right now about, in terms of the music industry, about kind of like Illuminati and that there's, you know, it's really a devil-worshipping practice that, that that's what the entire music industry is. So, you know, when I read those comments and stuff like that and I realize that I'm kind of just being lumped into something that is mainstream, you know, a, a viewpoint of maybe a very, very religious people that because they see the rest of the music industry and then they hear me, say something like third eye and it's like automatically I kind of get lumped in with, you know, the Lady Gaga sort of stories about that or whatever it may be. Um, you know, that's definitely made me just be like, wait, am I like, what's going on? Like what, you know, am I really a part of something that I'm not aware of or something? And, you know, I, I just time and time again, I realized that this has all been organic for me. The entire process of becoming, of getting to where I am has really been, um, you know, me just in terms of making music has just been me, you know, growing and changing and learning and really wanting to like seeing the world and understanding how we work and how the world works and, you know, the, the metaphysics of it all and just really wanting everyone to have that knowledge, you know, to know that what you think about expands and to know that, you know, loving the earth is loving yourself and just all these different things like, if I can help one or two people become aware of that, then, you know, it's worth my time. And, you know, fortunately, it appears that it's much more than one or two people. So, I mean, I just feel very grateful and blessed. And, you know, I'm just part of many, like all of you guys, you know, we're all, we all have our unique role to play and our puzzle piece to fit into the overall picture of, you know, how things move forward. And, you know, I'm just one of many, 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 many voices saying the same thing. So I'm going to keep on keeping on, you know, as, as long as I possibly can. You know, I, I think that's funny that you say that because I wrote about the whole Jay-Z, Kanye, Rihanna, Illuminati thing, their their use of that imagery and stuff. And, and you, your music has a totally different feel. It's a much more, um, even though it's an urban sound, it's a much more earthy, organic uh lighter feel which is which is which is awesome um 
but you know, you were talking about the girl who had the the spiritual experience listening to your to your song. You know, I I, I find that interesting um, because when I was about seventeen, I had sort of a similar experience. I'm I'm sort of ashamed to say with Madonna's Ray of Light video. So, <laughs> <laughs> so nice. yeah. So that's 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 definitely a cool thing that m- when music can definitely uh, open open spiritual doors. I think. Hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it did for me. You know, throughout my whole life, it made me feel less alone. It educated me about a major problem in the world. You know, that I wasn't aware of. Or you know, it, music has just been everything to me. You talked about the beats per minute. Like when I went to the Miami Winter Music Conference in Florida. Um, and just became aware of electronic music and just the power of it. I was changed forever, you know. So I do, I do think music has so much power in the world. Trying to look over show notes, seeing if we missed anything. <laughs> no, but Kelly, I'd like to know if you had the opportunity to say something to oh, a couple thousand pagans all at once, what would you say? Oh, wow. Um, well, I would just say keep being love. That's, I mean, to me, it's it's all about love. It's all about, you know, loving what you hate, loving everything and everyone, and just you know, focusing your energy and your intention on that. Why is Peter in danger? My denial mechanism. <laughs> Amber, I do not appreciate this. I know you don't like it either. No. Oh no, Scurvy's got warm fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you're talking about how, you know, everything is love and to, to love everyone and, um, you know, even even persons or things that you don't like to just, you know, really send that out there. You know, it, it sounds like a very Buddhist concept if you swap out the word love for compassion. Is, is that having a heavy influence in your life, a Buddhist philosophy? Yeah, I, I would say that... Um, Buddhism has definitely played um, a part. I don't, um, I don't feel like I've read Siddhartha, and I've definitely um, learned a lot about Buddhism. But I, you know, I, I feel as if it's it's one of many, many, many different things. And I mean, I say I say love everything because I do recognize there's within humans there is you know, both sides of the mirror are present. And it's like, I I mean, I see it as I'm an extreme. Like, I can feel apocalyptic when I see a storm, and I can feel totally connected to nature when I see a storm. It's like, you know, I can go one way or the other, and I think that that's the nature of human being. And I just believe, though, that for us to actually advance, and I think that our energy and our time has been so focused as a species on hate and fear that, you know, if I have one message or one thing that I want is for us to focus on on the love and, and just giving it. As as difficult as it is based on our, you know, biological makeup, it's it's hard. Our, we have this voice in our head that's just, you know, judging, evaluating, going in a million different directions based on the collective consciousness and the society that we live in. And the things that are, we're exposed to energetically are just crazy, you know, the war and famine and you know poverty and it's just it to me it's like debilitating sometimes but you know i only get out of that by just really feeling compassion and love for everyone and everything um you know and recommitting to that every moment that it goes away Uh oh, silence. Is that a bad thing? No, actually. <laughs> no, I think uh, everybody's just getting ready to wrap up here soon just because we're running out of topics, it seems. <laughs> yeah, time for some randomness. If you weren't uh, if you weren't a rapper, what do you think you would do and or what do you do in your free time that takes away from your music? Well not takes away from, but 
something else that you do, hobby? <clears throat> yeah, um, I would probably really love to um, to learn magic inside and out, really just hone my, my skills of everything from levitation to telepathy to, um, you know, I'd love, I, I feel very strongly that I, at least maybe later in life, want, want to focus on healing and um, becoming uh, a practitioner. I'm like been drawn to Reiki and various other um, cellular expansion and different things like that. And I, so I, I know that if, if I suddenly was not able to um, make music and run my business and stuff, that's probably where I would head and actually where, where I've, I'm trying to keep that my foundational, you know, kind of, Thing so that eventually, as I learn more and more and more and more, eventually when I get later in life, that's that is exactly what I'll probably do. I have a kind of a off the wall question: How do you keep your skin looking so freaking fantastic? Because I'm looking <laughs> at photos of you, I'm looking at videos, and I'm like, damn, that is some fine skin. So, all right, secrets, give me your secrets. <laughs> well, um, there the. the Photos, um, I would say the secret is often Photoshop and a really, really good makeup artist. Um, I, I don't, I'm my best, one of my best friends is my, is my photographer and I don't always see what she does, but I know that, you know, she has all kinds of little tricks that she does, but I also have really amazing, um, friends that are makeup artists and, you know, it's like they create art out of my face. So, um, you know, that's really it. I mean, I do have fairly good skin overall, but it's, you know, a lot, I, I, I often cover up my imperfections and whatnot. And it's funny that you asked that because over this like weekend, I was in Chicago and I got a facial, you know, I'm turning 31. I'm definitely seeing the age on my face and whatnot. And I, uh, you know, I got a facial cause I was with my, my friend and, um, that I hadn't seen in a long time or kind of like doing a girl's thing. And, um, you know, I, I, I was telling her that to me though, it's, it's sort of like, you know, I'm being fake in a way due to the makeup and, and the, you know, potential Photoshop and whatnot. But, you know, at the same time it's art, it's, you know, like that's kind of the perspective that I take. And so, I, you know, I don't see a major problem with it, but I have considered, you know, just really sort of doing a video where I just, you know, I, roll out of bed and I look my worst and I, you know, maybe I'm broken out from that being that time of the month or something and just make a video just like that to kind of really show that, you know, it's not, it, that's not what it's about. But I do recognize that for me to have mainstream appeal and for people that maybe would have no resonance with this type of music that I make, me looking a certain way and really having an artistic you know, eye on me that helps me create the imagery and stuff that I do um, does does potentially draw people in. So, you know, there's a million different, you can look at it in, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, I just, like I said, I'm every day I kind of reevaluate how I do things and why I do things. So, lots of moisturizer is, is I guess, the easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my question was a showstopper. I just ended all conversation. <laughs> so shall we say final thoughts? I think that's a good idea. Unless anybody has anything else? Final thoughts. Alrighty, somebody's going for final thoughts. Well, I just want to say it has definitely been a pleasure for your interview. Um, I know I sort of drifted off a little bit here and there, but then again, everybody knows that I have horrible ADD and only has an attention span of for about 25 minutes, and then I go off and do something and come back. So I apologize <laughs> that for that. <laughs> But um, it was definitely a, a very good interview. Um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> 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 uh, 
And um, I hope that if you have any questions for us um, or need feedback in the future, um, go ahead and give pretty much any of us a shout unless somebody else says differently. Um, but, um, yeah, that's pretty Thank much you. my final thought. Well, uh, I'll go next. Um, you know, I I was a, a a fan of the videos. I think your videos are very well done. I, I like the music. I like the the things that you talk about. But I'm I'm seriously I was I was <laughs> worried about this interview, and and I'm actually I, I'm coming away very impressed and and very excited to see where your music goes and and uh, and keeping tabs on on you. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm really glad that you decided to to do the PCP interview, and yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm. I, I'm glad to hear that. My final thought. Okay, Kelly. Okay, you go. All right, brutal honesty, Kelly. Didn't like your music before the show. Still don't like it, but you know what? I like you. <laughs> Well, that's good. I, I, I don't, I don't expect everybody to like it. I appreciate your honesty. Scurvy. Um. I, I, I want to say something to Peter really quick. You know, if it's too loud, you're just too old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep track of that remark. <laughs> and that definitely so stay, stay tuned, Peter, because I, I do. On my my newer work, there's there's definitely some different, you know, some differences that you'll see. I mean, I'm doing more of the same for sure, but um, you know, I've been I've been experimenting with all sorts of different things. So maybe you'll find something in the future. But if you don't, it's okay. I'm not mad at you. I will keep an open mind. Awesome. That's all I can ask for. Shoot scurvy, quick. I was about to say something, but the million interruptions just sort of totally. Blanked my memory. Mm. Okay, now I remember. My final thought is, is I'm upset because Dave gives all me the fun ones to post-produce and he gets this easy one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can spout off some random profanity if that would make you feel better. <laughs> we could talk about something related to slavery for Dave in the spirit of his absence. <gasps> <laughs> Other than that, I got nothing. Kelly's sitting there like, why is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing if you're laughing. I laugh at laughter, so it's okay. <laughs> Dave's one of our main hosts that uh, unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. So, and does most, 99% of our uh, our recording in the past couple of episodes we've uh, had to do without him and been learning the the uh, recording process on our own, mainly Scurvy and Amber helping him out a little bit here and there. Actually, Amber's uh, re Amber's ready to hit the floor rolling. You kidding? <laughs> yeah, I was the one helping Scurvy out. So there. <laughs> Go Amber. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my final thought is um, other than like a song by the Beastie Boys back in the 80s, I have never listened to an entire rap song. Like, not the whole thing, because, <laughs> you know, ever. So today was my my day to kind of look that up and, and um, have my, my son walk me through it. <laughs> um, so yours is the first rapper that I've listened to of their, of their entire song. Um, and I, I can't quite say that I get it, um, mm -hmm. but I liked that it was almost like chanting in a way. Um, ah. That it was like chanting poetry. Like it, it reminded me of um, some of the chants that uh, some of the, the Far Eastern religions do, just with a slightly different beat to it. So um, I found it pretty amazing. So awesome! I popped your cherry. You did, you did, and <laughs> yay! Now, now Star's gonna be jealous. <laughs> I am. That's my con buddy. Hands off. 
<laughs> moments like this that I love having a copy of the raw audio. <laughs> <laughs> or hands-on, as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hand check, everybody. Where's your hands? <laughs> Sam? Okay. I think. too busy typing I... with one hand. No, I want to make sure I unmuted my mic. <laughs> For some reason, that's really kicking my butt. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Final thoughts. I don't know. It was a wonderful interview. It was very enjoyable. Um, I, I will say, Kelly, I'm slightly perturbed at you because... One of your damn songs has been stuck in my head for about three days now, and I <laughs> can't get it out, and it's so annoying. <laughs> it's good, but it's maddening, and, <laughs> and I blame you, so uh-huh. um, <laughs> just trying to be a good, you know, podcaster and do some research and listen to music, and the damn thing got stuck in my head. So. <laughs> my apologies. That was, that's, that's what I want. No, I'm just kidding. Right? Don't, don't apologize. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to have to play it backwards now and see if there's some liminal messaging going on. <laughs> Start a new room of Let me now. know if there is. <laughs> I, no, um, but no, I, I, I wish you the best of luck in your career and in your growth. And then, you know, I, I think... Um, you know, you've, you've put in a lot of years so far, and it's it's really just the beginning of the journey. And and you know, I, I wish you a lot of surprises, and you know, and uh, you know, all the best. Thank you so much. I think my final thought is that um, pagans in general, we tend to be a little bit on the defensive and a little bit on the judgmental side. So any time that we interview somebody, we're kind of on the edge of our seats going, oh god, what's this person going to be like? Are they going to be a complete fruitcake, or are they going to be okay? And I'm so happy. Thank you, everybody. Kelly, as well as everybody else, for putting in what you did and really making this an awesome episode. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you don't that you didn't think I was a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. We've, we've had a uh, one or two fruit cakes on, so that that's why we're a little bit uh, hesitant at first. Need to I understand. Need to for another five more minutes because we must record longer than I prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barrett, you have ten minutes for your final thought. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that I'm gonna uh, disappoint you here because I don't have one. <laughs> Damn you, Barrett! <laughs> Barrett must be going Zen. What? <laughs> going what? Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, if there's anything that you'd like to say, um. Shamelessly plug your sites. Tell us where we can find any of your stuff. Final thoughts. Go <clears> for it. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, like I said, I, I'm, I'm really grateful um, that you guys um, brought me on PCP and, um, you know, that you had great questions and I had a lot of fun too, um, especially getting to hear from you guys. It was definitely a great experience and, you know, if you ever um, want to have me back and talk about future music i'm totally open to it and um i'll definitely continue to follow you guys um and an easy way that people that are maybe listening can um find me quickly if you don't know how to because my name's spelled a little bit strangely um you can google female rapper um i actually come up first through a total like phenomenon of um a whole bunch of crazy stuff that we've been doing for a long long time and it finally worked um so i come up first for google female rapper if you google female rapper and um kellymaze.com is pretty much where you can find everything or if you're an amazon um 
if you're someone that buys music or books and stuff on Amazon, you can download my music for free on Amazon as well. And I think that's pretty much it. Thank you again, everyone. I really appreciate your time and your attention. Not a problem. It was fun. Oh, yeah. We also know some other people that do interviews occasionally. Um... Yeah, Lamika has uh, Lamika's Wiccan podcast. We do a pagan women's episode episode once a month, and she uh, unofficially invited you. Oh, cool! To come on. So I will. I'm going to be emailing you um, Facebook information for how to find people. So I'll just add the information for that in the process. Okay, awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love talking to people. I learn something new every time I do, and. It's a great opportunity to get, you know, get the message out there. So anybody that you guys connect me with, I'm extremely grateful and always open. Oh, you need to go on Bobby's podcast. Then. We're not scarring her, are we? <laughs> Come on, be nice. Gut wrench. Gut, gut wrench has actually been in the chat room asking us to ask you to sign his boobs. And, <laughs> and, and so I waited till now where it would be easy to cut out. Um, but I, 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 I passed it along, Gut Wrench, so you should be happy. <laughs> gut Wrench is a big 12 year old. Great guy. Great. <laughs> he is pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of PCP. Join us next week where we are talking about a topic that I haven't looked up yet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Amber. Not a problem. I'll be keeping in touch soon. Sounds thanks good. Thanks for coming on, Kelly. Thank Have a good you. night. Thank, Thank you. you. You too. Take care. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. And episode has ended, and we are on After Hours. <coughs> Kelly, if you have something to do, feel free to exit out. If not, meh, just hang out. We don't care. <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, I, my, my friend just brought me some food um, that I've been sneaking while I'm here, but I think I need some water. It's very hot. The food is very hot, um, mm -hmm. spicy, so I need to go get some water. But it was really awesome talking to you guys, and I definitely keep in touch. All right, that's awesome. it. Have a nice evening. Have a nice okay. evening, Kelly. She has a, you too. She has a you too. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. It's very complicated saying goodbye to all of us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, it is. I want to break out to the bike. Like sound and music style. I wonder if she was <laughs> like, "Oh, let me get off! I'm tired of dealing with these people." Oh. You know, <laughs> she great. totally thinks we're fruitcakes. Like when we we're like, "Oh God, good, good, you aren't a fruitcake," and she's probably thinking, "Oh my God, these people are fucking nuts." <laughs> and that's why we're trying to throw. Huh, I believe like, so. Oh, we've had crazy people. What's Kirby? We're still recording and broadcasting. So yeah. Alright. <laughs> what? It's not like we said anything bad. You know, though, she's going to be in the pagan community. She has to get used to freaks like us. We should, so, you know. We're the <laughs> ones. We should introduce her to the other kind of community. You know, <laughs> that's, I, I really, man. that's something I really you slowly want. have to break to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to see if, if, if Circle Sanctuary would bring her a PSG because that would just be kind of awesome. <laughs> Oh, I would so love that. I would just be sitting... I would turn my chair to face the audience. <laughs> that would be awesome. I have to say I'm really, really impressed with the whole thing. Right? I don't think her name, I don't think her name will be an expletive anymore. I know, we have to find someone else to bash now. We no, I think Kelly may be like a positive adjective now. Yeah, the problem is we have two Barretts, and we don't want to insult the one that's actually pretty cool. True. You know, I was wondering if it was the same Barrett and no one clued me in, so thanks for saying that. <laughs> no, I'm not the same Barrett. All this time she's been looking at your IM picture all really. <laughs>
Yeah, like, no lie. I didn't want to be rude about it, because I'm like, maybe he made amends with the group and he's back. And No. Because it's not a common name. No, it's not a common name. But no, that Barrett is um, on the run from child services for abusing his kids and um, running out on child support. Jesus Christ. Rock on. Yeah. Hey. So if anyone so, has the whereabouts... Contact PCP so we can give it to his, ex- or his ex-wife. I need a photo. They all end up in the Virgin Islands sooner or later. <laughs> You're wearing a robe. Right? Why do Why do only the bad people get to go to the Virgin Islands? This is not because fair. Because it's a sunny place for shady characters. <laughs> oh, man. How long and that's why you're there? Uh, no, unfortunately. I wish my life was that interesting. Maybe if I stalk him enough, he'll run away and hide there. <laughs> I, could be, I could be your vacation. <laughs> he could buy my house. <laughs> well, he's not paying child support payments, I mean... He should be able to afford it. Th- that might be why all the charity characters wind up there, because they can actually afford it, because they're running out on paying shoes or, you know, the law of some sort, and so they probably have extra money somehow. It may be, but it seems like, it seems like every week here they grab four or five of them. Uh, where do you live again, Peter? St. Croix. Oh. You say south. it was, it Way was south. like, oh, like a bad thing. No, it's just I've never known anybody from there. It's a- We're a little bit south. We think Star's a Yankee, so. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, well. I'll, I'll take the right away. I don't know where the Virgin Islands are. And all the time I thought they were in the Pacific. And I was thinking, man, Peter's up early every day. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Star, we need to get you one of those old-fashioned globe bars. And then you can just have cocktails and get geography lessons. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you're homeschooled. Like, Yeah. Geography goes out the window, but you know everything about Henry VIII. (laughs) Star, you're not giving me any confidence with this, okay? You know, you're right. You know, I actually don't see much of a problem with that. (laughs) Henry VIII, I am (laughs) Well, I am glad that I jumped in. I wasn't going to. See, we were actually responsible adults. We were nice. Yeah. And I'm so glad. I sat there in stress for like three days. I'm like, oh God, please don't let this be a Taylor episode. Please don't let this be a Taylor episode.